Hey guys, Michael from Car Chemistry. In today's video, we'll quickly go over the relationship between wavelength, frequency, and energy. I have the equations right here. We'll, quick, we'll start by going over the equations and then talk about the relationships between each of these variables. So the first one, C equals lambda times times frequency. So speed of light equals the wavelength times frequency. Speed of light is a constant, and since wavelength and frequency are both multiplying to a constant, that means these are going to be inverse related. As this one goes up, this one has to go down to keep this number the same. So we can say that wavelength and frequency are inversely related. Or we can write as the wavelength goes up, the frequency goes down. Or as the wavelength goes down, the frequency will go up. Okay, next one, the equation. Energy equals Planck's constant times frequency. So Planck's constant is a constant, uh, so that means as the frequency goes up, the energy has to go up. Because it, it, if you have a larger number here, when you multiply it, you'll get a larger product. So we can say that energy and frequency are directly related. So as the, as the frequency goes up, the energy will go up and as the frequency goes down, the energy will go down as well. All right, last equation. Energy equals Planck's constant times speed of light divided by wavelength. So we already talked about that. Planck's constant and speed of light, these are constants, so we can just ignore them. And we're really just looking at wavelength energy. So as wavelength goes up, energy will have to go down because you're dividing by a larger number, which will make the quotient smaller. So then that means that energy and wavelength, these are inversely related. So then as the wavelength goes up, the energy goes down, and as the wavelength goes down, the energy goes up. So just to summarize it, I think this is the easiest way to, to understand everything. Let's just draw right out the divisible colors the in the rainbow, Roy G. Bib. So red, orange, yellow, Roy, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And then I'm going to add add some some arrows. So red usually it's it's around 700 nanometer. That's its wavelength, and violet is typically around like 400 or so. So we can we can draw an arrow going this way, showing that the wavelength increases in the direction of red. So red will have longer wavelength than violet. Well, since we know that wavelength and frequency are inversely related, that means frequency the frequency will go in the opposite direction. So violet has the highest frequency and red has the lowest frequency of the visible colors. And then when we talk about energy, energy and frequency are directly related. So energy and frequency move in the same direction. So that means energy will also go in this direction, meaning violet will have more energy than red. Uh, violet will also have more energy than green. Um, and it also matches up with this, the energy and wavelength are inversely related. So you can see that energy and wavelength, they're moving in opposite directions. And now let's take a look at one final example just to make sure everything makes sense. All right, so let's say we have two, let's say we have uh, two lights. So we have, we have light one and we have light two. And then light one, we can say it has a frequency of 6.1 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And then light two, we'll say that it has 1.3 times 10 to the 11th hertz. So then I can ask you, which of these lights will, will have a longer wavelength? Well, we know that wavelength and frequency are inverse related. So let's just call this A, and then we'll call this B. So since A has a higher frequency, it must have a shorter wavelength because energy and, I mean, frequency and wavelength are inverse related. So then we can say that the wavelength of A is gonna be shorter than the wavelength of B, because A has a higher frequency, so it must have a shorter wavelength, because they're inversely related. Now, if I were to ask you about the relationship for energy, then you can say that since A has a higher frequency, it will also have more energy, because energy and frequency are directly related. So we can say that E of A, energy of A, is going to be greater than the energy of B. And that's that's it. Hopefully that video wasn't, wasn't too confusing, and it makes a little bit more sense uh, between the relationships now. So wavelength and frequency are inverse related. Wavelength and 
energy are inversely related as well, and then frequency and energy are directly related. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you, and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.